Hi everyone, we are on part six of our ACT practice test, otherwise known as page 29 in the test that I've linked below. Once again, I'm not affiliated with ACT and these are not my problems, just something I'm doing to help. So, um, if you're new to this video, I always circle the answers from their answer key just to make sure we're getting back to the correct answer every time. So let's get started. Number 39. Given matrices x equals negative 1, 0, and y equals negative 2, negative 1, which of the following matrices is x times y? So when you're multiplying matrices, you're going to multiply column 1 by row 1, so negative 1 times negative 2, and then you're going to add column 2 times row 2 and solve that out. So negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. 0 times negative 1 is 0. And 2 plus 0 is 2, which is letter D. Put my little brackets there. Number 40, regardless of how the graph is oriented in the standard XY coordinate plane, no graph in one of the following categories has a vertical line of symmetry. Which one? So remember, a line of symmetry is basically just a line where if you folded that object in half, it would look the same on both sides, kind of like a butterfly. So uh, for example, and it says it doesn't matter how the graph is oriented in the standard coordinate plane. So basically, we're looking for any line of cemetery, um, symmetry, which, whichever way the um, item is like so the line could be like horizontal or vertical etc so a line has a line of symmetry you can fold that in half so we can cross it out um, a square that also that has multiple lines of symmetry fold in half be the same a pentagon we know that's five sides I could fold that in half right there. So that one's that one. A parallelogram. This one's kind of hard to see, but if I fold it in half this way, that's not very perfect. But if I fold it in half on that line, it would be the same on both sides. Um, and then remember your scalene triangle. This is basically a triangle where like none of the lines are the same. So something that looks like that. There's nowhere I could fold this triangle that would get it to be the same on both sides. So that's how we get letter K. 41. The equation 24x squared plus 2x equals 15 has two solutions. What is the greater of the two solutions? So what you're going to do is first get this whole equation equal to zero. So I need to move this 15 over to the other side. Since it's a positive 15, I'm gonna subtract it. And it's gonna leave me with a trinomial. We can't combine the 15 with anything else because one has an x, one has an x squared, so they all have to have the same variables and same amount of variables. So let's factor this trinomial down. I'm going to use the AC method to do this. You may have learned a different method, whichever way makes you happy. So let's see. 24 times negative 15 is negative 360. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to get me negative 360 and add to get me the middle number, which is a positive 2. So you can go down and write out all your factors. I kind of see off the top of my head uh, 20 and 18 have a difference of 2. If I make the 18 negative and the 20 positive. Um, if you can't see that, that's okay. Just keep dividing 360 by 1, by 2, by 3, by 4. You'll eventually get there. So we're going to use these two factors to factor it. So I'm going to split my middle term here. So I have positive 20x 
and negative 18x, bring down the rest of my problem. 4x squared. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two. Um, let's see, what number, what's my biggest number I can divide 24 and 20 by? I'm thinking of 4. And take out the lowest amount of x's you see. They have 1 in common. 24 divided by 4 is 6. I had 2 x's, I took 1 out, I have 1 left. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And I had an x here, but I took it out, so it's gone. This next one starts with a negative, so let's take out a negative. The biggest number I can think of to divide 18 and 15 by is 3. And I'm not going to take out any x's because the 15 doesn't have any. So I couldn't take out an x because it doesn't have one. So let's write over from what's left over from those parentheses. Negative 18 divided by negative 3 is 6. That x is still there. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. I'm going to stop and see, wow, my parentheses match, so I did it correctly. So let's write our answer. 6x plus 5. You just write one of the repeated parentheses. And then what's on the outside? 4x minus 3. Now, I'm going to use the zero product property to solve this. That just means that you split these parentheses up, set them each equal to zero, and solve them. So undo addition with subtraction. Sorry, I'm running out of space here. I'm going to write really small. Undo multiplication with division. So one of my answers is negative 5 sixths. And then this one's already set to zero, so I'll just work on that. X equals three fourths. So it says, which is the greater of the two solutions? The three fourths, because a positive is greater than a negative. So letter A checks out. All right, on number 42, it says, which of the following expressions is equal to the sine of 60 times cosine of 30 plus cosine of 60 times sine of 30. So this is a matter of knowing the sum and difference formula. This tells us the sine of x times the cosine of y plus the cosine of x times the sine of y is equal to the sine of x plus y, which is how it's getting us letter j if we plug in those numbers. Um, as you see, I'll do that here too. This was a 60 in the original problem, 30, 60, 30. So this is 60 and this is 30. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, um, I never learned that or I never memorized that and probably never will, that's okay. Um, I don't think I have it that well memorized either. Um, you can always use your calculator and just plug in all First, plug in your problem in your calculator, see what you get, and then match it. Do all of these problems and see which one gets you the same exact answer. Sorry, my, go my dog got a little riled up with that problem. Didn't like me giving you a little cheat right there. All right, 43. What is the area in square units of a circle that has a circumference of 12 pi units long? All right, so here's my circle. It's a bad circle, but that's okay. It says the circumference is 12 times pi. The formula for circumference is pi d, where d is our diameter. So that means my diameter, if we get rid of those pies, is 12. The diameter is the whole length here. Now it wants us to find the area. Area is pi r squared. The radius is half the diameter. 
So my radius is 6. So area equals pi times 6 squared, or 36 times pi, which is letter D. All right, 44. A barrel contains 25 liters of a solvent mixture that is 40% solvent and 60% water. Lee will add a pure solvent to the barrel without removing any of the mixture currently in the barrel so that the new mixture will contain 50% solvent and 50% water. How many liters of pure solvent should Lee add to create this new mixture? So let's start with our solvent. It says 40% of the 25 liters is the solvent. So 0.4 times 25 gets me 10. So we have 10 liters of solvent right now. Our water is 60% of the 25. So 0.6 times 25 gets us 15. We want it to be split 50-50. So how can I get 10 to be 15? By adding five liters of it. So they're even, so it's 50-50. So my answer is G, five. 45, for all x that does not equal plus or minus y. x over x plus y plus y over x minus y equals what? So the first thing we need to do is get a common denominator here. So I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by what's in the denominator on the other fraction. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom by x minus y and the top by x minus y. In the second um, fraction, I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by the denominator in the first fraction, which is x plus y. So x plus y, x plus y. Because we can't add them without getting a common denominator. So this is leaving me with x times x minus y over x plus y times x minus y plus y times x plus y over x plus y times x minus y. Now we can add these two fractions because their denominators are the same. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to distribute first and then we'll start adding these. So x times x is x squared. x times y is minus xy. Plus y times x is xy. y times y is y squared. All over the common denominator. When you're adding, you don't change the denominator. x plus y times x minus y. Let's simplify. I see this middle term can be simplified. So I'm gonna move over here. Um, negative one plus one is zero. So these basically are gone. So top I have x squared plus y squared over. And on the bottom, we have a foiling problem. Now, if you wanted to, you could stop, look at your answers and go, okay, I'm gonna save some time here because none of these answer options have the numerator as x squared plus y squared. But for the sake of finishing the problem, I'll FOIL this first. Outer, inner, good old FOILing, last. These middle terms, they're gone. So my final answer is x squared plus y squared over x squared minus y squared. And you cannot simplify that any further. Leave it like that. Don't say, oh, I can cancel these out. No, you, you can't do that. You can't just 
X something out from the top and bottom when they're being added. So that leaves us with answer E. All right, we almost there. Two more. 46. Mary James and Carlos sold one-fourth page advertisements for the school yearbook. Mary sold twice as many as Carlos did, and James sold three times as many as Mary did. What fraction of these advertisements does Carlos sell? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cross off this one-fourth page thing because the one-fourth is going to throw you off. It wants you to use the one-fourth somehow. It doesn't matter. It just wants to know how many they sold. So we're trying to find how many Carlos sold. So we're going to mark him as X. It says Mary sold twice, two times Carlos sold. And then it says James sold three times that Mary sold. But Mary is 2X. So James sold 6X. So let's pretend here. What happens if Carlos sold one, then Mary sold two, and James sold six. So Carlos sold a total of one out of one plus two plus six, nine. So Carlos only sold one ninth of the advertisements. Last one. In a window display at the flower shop, there are three spots for one plant each. So here's my little window display. One, two, three. So let my little plants go there. Um, to fill these three spots, Emily has six plants to select from, each a different type. Selecting from the six plants, Emily can make how many possible display arrangements with one plant in each spot. Note the positions do not matter. That's important. So in this first box right here, she has six plants she can plant there. So she picks one, she puts it in, okay? She picks a tulip. Here's my tulip. So now for this next box, she only has five plants left, okay? She picked a sunflower. Here's my sunflower. So for this last box, she has four options left. So let's go ahead and multiply those. Six times five times four is 120. So that's how many possible display arrangements are. So like, let's say if I put like a rose here, this is my rose, that's very bad. This is why I'm a math teacher. So this rose could go here instead or there instead. And then we still have three more plants where we haven't even taken into consideration. So that's why there's 120 possible ways to plant all these plants. So that is the end of this page. Feel free to like and subscribe um, to get the next section. And I hope this helped you guys. And good luck on all your studying. Bye.